I'm, I'm excited to, to talk here about the uh, Open Map Tiles project, which is a community project, open source project, started uh, two years ago. Uh, and it's a, a follower of uh, OSM, uh, OSM to Vector Tiles. Uh, you can find it at openmaptiles.org and uh, on GitHub at uh, uh, Open Map Tiles organization. Um, it's a set of uh, open source tools. Uh, which you can use to generate vector tiles uh, from OpenStreetMap and also from other uh, other data. <clears throat> from other data you have uh, available, so you can combine OpenStreetMap with other open data or your own proprietary business data, all into a single single map as you want. And this is this is a set of tools, uh, which in fact started as a student project, uh, but turned into into something what is used. Uh, quite heavily by a lot of people. Uh, I believe a lot of you know uh, how, how map tiles run. Whenever you look at a map, uh, you in fact uh, are um, interacting with a set of individual images or a set of individual tiles uh, which are pre-generated or uh, generated on demand. And in recent years, uh, these tiles turned from uh, raster tiles <coughs> from raster tiles into a uh, vector. So the vector data are nowadays transferred to the client and rendered on demand. Uh, the tiles have advantages such as caching, uh, so faster speed, and uh, it may contain uh, the raw data so the client can switch dynamically a language depending on the browser of the visitors on the settings of the device from uh, a person who is looking at the, at the map or uh, change the colors uh, adjust the style depending on the preference or even modify the map the way that it uh, looks uh, that it's customized for the person so for example you can highlight on the map your own home or certain features uh, based on the history and the map is very very dynamic thanks to vector tiles uh, how many of you uh, know what I just said I mean uh, raster vector tiles cool how many of you uh, are how many of you are creating uh, OpenStreetMap tags and contributing to the OpenStreetMap with the data? Amazing. Uh, how many of you are programmers? So coding. Great. And uh, and uh, that's 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 cool. Then I know whom I am, whom am I speaking to? The the whole the whole OpenMap Tiles project comes with the idea. Uh, that we will pre-generate the whole world. So it's millions of tiles, uh, the protobuf encoded vector tiles, uh, which, we, which we practically pre-generate from, uh, uh, from a database and sto store as small binaries inside of uh, an archive, inside of uh, SQLite and B-tiles. And uh, the entire world can in fact fit on a single USB disk. It's, it has the, the whole open street map. If it's encoded this way, uh, and it contains the subset of the data we have. It will, uh, it will have about 60 gigabytes, so it fits on 64 gigabyte USB stick. Uh, the whole Open Map Tiles project has uh, three, uh, three core uh, features. Uh, it, defines, it defines the binding between uh, OpenStreetMap tags and uh, what uh, between the raw data, so how to get from OpenStreetMap into vector tiles, uh, and that's called schema. What appears on what what zoom level? Uh, how do you generalize? What what is uh, uh, what set of features and what set of attributes appear in the finer vector tiles? That's the vector tile schema, and that's openly documented, uh, and that's the core repository on OpenMap tiles uh, and the core of the project. Next to that, we have a set of tools um, which uh, are used to uh, convert the description of the schema into different output formats. Uh, the, those are called Open Map Tiles tools. Uh, they are written in Python, and uh, they are combining combining uh, our our snippets of individual layers into into something into a single configuration file for different tools uh, which are used to generate the tiles afterwards. Uh, and we have also a set of open map styles. So for the schema, for the definition of what appears in the vector tiles, we give you look and feel of different maps. Uh, and this is, this is uh, BSDCC by license. 
So, so anybody can use it for business, adjust it as he wants, and uh, com in, together with the vector tiles, derive his or her own map. So the tools are, in fact, uh, easily, the maps are, in fact, easily adjustable, the styles for your own look and feel. Uh, let's make a first demo. So you see how, how it is possible to bring a, a open street map onto your own computer or server in about two minutes. So if you go to openmaptiles.org website, uh, you can find there, uh, set up a server link, and uh, on this link, scrolling down, uh, we've prepared um, guides for even YouTube videos for how to uh, how to uh, put the installation, how to create the installation of, of a basic server of OpenStreetMap. On any Linux server, it's in fact just two lines of code, so you need a Docker, and uh, if you just copy and paste the Docker command and you go to localhost 8080, uh, it will download the software and uh, launch it. Then you get a wizard where you can find uh, the pre-generated tiles. I'm searching for Milan. Uh, here are samples of our open styles. So uh, you can preview these styles. Um, our vector tiles support, in fact, 55 languages. So you can choose uh, a language of your choice. So the entire world changes to a language you have selected. You can uh, deselect alternative names for Japanese, Chinese, and transcriptions, and uh, potentially apply your own style. The, the, the server gives you different outputs for map tiles uh, in raster form, and uh, map services, and uh, vector tiles, as well as uh, uh, like WMTS uh, capabilities, so you can open it in GIS and load it in different tools. After it downloads, uh, you are practically, uh, you have practically offline installation of OpenStreetMap-based maps on your own computer with all these services. This is an example viewer for vector tiles, uh, which is automatically generated, and you see the whole map now runs from localhost 8080. Uh, equally, you get raster tiles. Uh, so on uh, the server generated uh, rasters from the same uh, style uh, using Mapbox GL native open source component in the backend. Uh, so this is, this is in, about three minutes installation of, uh, of OpenStreetMap, and it practically demonstrates what the project is capable of. If you go to the website, you can try it and uh, have the map on your computer. It's all powered by open source, and uh, it's, this is not the only server you have. In fact, the whole project is about freedom. So uh, you can choose different tool sets and combine the, the tiles and use them the way you want. In fact, uh, there are about dozens of, of different servers um, which are serving the open web tiles. Uh, some of them are serving the pre-generated uh, pre-generated tiles which, which you can download or generate yourself. So uh, the test server, for example, or the post serve is able to, to serve uh, the open map tiles, vector tiles on demand from uh, PostGIS. Uh, there are other, other servers like T-Rex and uh, Tegola, uh, which, which in, a, in some way supports, supports open map tiles too. Uh, so, so it's really your choice, uh, depending on what server infrastructure you prefer, what programming language you prefer, how do you want to deploy uh, the maps on your own. But the data are still the same. Uh, the same applies to a client. Uh, so uh, you have, uh, over the last two years, um, many different uh, teams and community projects and uh, companies uh, improve the tools with the support for vector tiles. And this means uh, it's not anymore any, anyhow dependent on any single company. Uh, you have complete choice of uh, going uh, between uh, between different renderers, choosing a native mobile SDK from uh, Carto or from Mapbox, uh, implementing desktop application or server renderers in uh, .NET or C Sharp, 
on top of GL style uh, or uh, on top of map of, on top of Mapnik or uh, another another tools like Mapbox, Mapbox GL native. Uh, so thanks to the compatibility, the the maps applies uh, on multiple tools, and this is this is pretty amazing. We even um, we even tested ArcGIS compatibility with their stack, and OpenMapTiles are compatible if you if you uh, adjust the metadata, and it can be improved. Uh, so that's something for for the future of the project. Uh, and uh, just recently, uh, the HSR team, the students from Switzerland, uh, published published QGIS native plugin for for opening the vector tiles natively in QGIS. Uh, so that's another quite cool. Example. I was I was quite blown away how how far, for example, a project like Open Map Tiles got. So what you see here is not Mapbox; it's Open Layers uh, with with native uh, JavaScript without uh, WebGL acceleration, uh, rendering Open Map Tiles and uh, GL style our Open Map style bright. Uh, so so you really have a choice of different toolsets. Uh, the other part of the freedom is support for different coordinate systems. Uh, the the open map tiles is not written in a way that, that it's restricted to Mercator. Uh, it's default Mercator, but uh, this is an example of uh, of WGS84 entire open street map uh, in uh, vector tiles, which is compatible with the different tools again. So so uh, um, you can in fact create, and we did we did some samples. Uh, vector tiles in, in a coordinate system you need. Um, while keeping uh, the same schema, while keeping the same zoom level structure and aligning the styles uh, to, uh, to the different uh, projections and uh, coordinate systems defined and used by uh, local countries. Uh, we did also polar, polar maps out of OpenStreetMap. The purpose of this presentation is a bit demystify the open map tiles. Uh, so make it easier for you to, to try the tool and, and play with it. Um, there is uh, documentation at openmaptiles.org slash doc and uh, uh, in, fact, in fact the tools uh, are pretty easy. The, 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 basic, the basic overview of what is happening in open map tiles if you generate tiles is quite straightforward. The first step is getting from OpenStreetMap into PostGIS, uh, where we use Imposum 3 uh, for the conversion. Uh, then we have they have a set of, of uh, SQL operation uh, done on top of PostGIS, like generalization for different zoom levels. We are bringing in other sources, like natural earth data and uh, shape files uh, from from uh, other other sources uh, and. Once you have it in PostGIS, um, we are using tile life Mapnik in this moment as the generator uh, for, for making the SQL queries for each tile and encoding it into protobuf form, uh, getting it out. Uh, any of these components can be practically switched, so it's all about the schema and the definition of what appears where, on which zoom level, and how it's called. Uh, but the tools can be, can be replaced. Uh, so in future, we, we may replace Tilelight Mapnik with uh, PostGIS powered uh, Mapbox vector, vector tile generator or with any other, any other renderer. Um, so let's, let's jump on a, on a demo of how to modify OpenMap tiles. Um, if you go to uh, openmaptiles.org schema, uh, there you find a definition of, uh, the, of the layers uh, we have. Uh, so all the information which is present inside of vector tiles, it's, it's a subset of, all, of entire open street map. Uh, and you can, with this inspect mode, um, practically look at the, the raw data uh, which are inside of vector tiles. Uh, if, you, if you find something what, what is missing, you can uh, quite easily on uh, OpenStreetMap wiki uh, search for the information of how it's encoded in OpenStreetMap. So t check the tags, and uh, this is an example, uh, basic example of uh, uh, skiing, skiing lifts. Uh, so if you would like to create a map for skiing, uh, the data are not yet in OpenStreetMap, but we can edit. Uh, if we, if we uh, 
do a clone of the GitHub repository. So we, we copy the OpenWeb Task project to our computer and launch the uh, editor. You will see that uh, there is a layer folder, layers folder, which contains all the layers, and uh, in uh, each is also a uh, complete definition of the layer. And there is also openwebtiles.yaml file, uh, which is linking these, these individual layers. So let's say we don't want to generate the entire open map tiles, uh, entire open street map. We just want to create a new MB tiles, which will have only the tags related to the skiing. Um, if we if we do the skiing, yeah, I prepared a demo. So uh, you practically need three files for the new layer. One of them is mapping. That's that's uh, defining uh, for Impostum 3 the set of tags uh, in OpenStreetMap, and it will generate OSM skiing line string uh, PostGIS table with the uh, with the keys and names. Uh, you define in this file. The other file is layers.sql, uh, which defines around a function for which uh, returns from this OSM skiing line string uh, table uh, all the objects uh, in upper than 10 zoom levels and uh, overlapping. The other part is mapping file. In the mapping, uh, mapping is linked uh, by, by um, the layers and uh, this, this query uh, inside of the skiing YAML, so, so the file which defines the entire layer uh, is, is uh, defining the query and calling the PostGIS database, which contains the table imported from Impossum. If we, uh, if we do this modification, so just add the three files into the OpenMapTile structure, we can uh, just call make. Uh, it will call OpenMapTile's tools and uh, convert the uh, the, this structure into single files for the individual tools. Uh, we will download some data. Let's download Switzerland. Yeah, I did it already. Yeah. And uh, let's um, start Postgre. I will start it with Docker. And um, yeah, it's running. And now we can uh, we can uh, run the import uh, of OpenStreetMap data into uh, the Postgre with the style defined. Uh, this is now launching uh, the Impossum 3 with the configuration. So in this moment, the uh, downloaded PBF, OSM PBF file is being turned into a table in a PostGIS uh, with the attributes defined previously. Now the next step is uh, importing the SQL functions we have on top of uh, PostGIS. So here it would be the generalization which would run, uh, but we don't have any on this example. And uh, now we are ready to generate the tiles. Yep. And it starts, and now it's generating the tile for entire Switzerland. Okay, modifying metadata. And in the data folder, we ended up with tiles.mbtiles file, which if we open for in any viewer for mbtiles, I'm using the MapTiler desktop, you can, you can preview the, the data directly on a map with the X-ray view. So we have just generated new mbtiles with a set of uh, tags defined from OpenStreetMap, and this scales to the entire world. Uh, okay, so our intention on the project is that it's uh, it's used by the community. It is, in fact, already uh, Open Historical Map, for example, is forking Open Map tiles and and importing the data, which I saw recently on GitHub, and it's pretty cool. Uh, there are there are other other uh, other people are are changing the, the schema. We have contributions from uh, from different companies which are using the maps. So it's a, it's a live project, and I would love to see it even more live. So uh, that's definitely something what I would love to discuss with you. 
Uh, please, please catch me afterwards and uh, let's talk about what to change on the project, how to adjust it, what, what are the, the breaking, breaking uh, uh, parts for you or uh, where did you hit a wall so, so we, can, we can help to solve it. Uh, next to the Open Map Tiles uh, open source project which runs at openmaptiles.org, we also have .com. Uh, where you can find uh, the pre-generated tiles for the entire world. So if you don't want to generate the tiles yourself, you can download them. Uh, it's completely free for personal use. If you want to use it for business, we ask some money to sustain the project. And this is the strategy for, for keeping the Open Map Tiles project running. Um, in the same moment, we are working now on... Uh, uh, yeah, the, the OpenStreetMap tiles are weekly updated. Uh, we are also producing other data, such as contours, hill shades, uh, satellite, terrain, and aerial for the entire world, which gives you a chance to, uh, to create even more beautiful maps. So in this example, we see uh, a vectorized land cover for the entire world turned into vector tiles, which gives you a feeling of, of a more global map and uh, brings nice colors to the upper zoom levels. Uh, where later on we switch to the to the land cover, which is part of OpenStreetMap. Uh, this is on another example map uh, with the uh, hill shading and contour lines for the whole world, uh, which uh, which we created as vector tiles, and you can you can download it and use it on your servers. And now we are working on a, a global satellite layer. Uh, we have down to. 20 meters the entire world, powered by NASA and Sentinel-2 data. And uh, we are now bringing in, uh, with color toning, aerial imagery, uh, open data from uh, different parts of the world to have a bit more compl complete coverage. So this is an example with NIPE and HRO uh, data where you don't recognize you are switching from satellite to aerial uh, and you're just getting higher, higher resolution. Uh, this is another example, um, 3D, 3D terrain with vector tiles, uh, our, our open map tiles, uh, vector tiles uh, displayed in JavaScript Viewer. Uh, so all of this you can, you can basically uh, download and put in your, in your servers and uh, run service on top of the data we create. If you don't want to bother with that, we have a new thing. Uh, we are launching MapTiler Cloud, uh, which is a hosting uh, powered by, by all the open source uh, and open data we process. And uh, it runs on a reliable infrastructure and has uh, very competitive pricing. In fact, I believe cheaper than, uh, than all uh, or most of other providers. You can host your own data, change the styles, get raster and vector tiles from us and uh, business use start even at 20 bucks per month. Uh, if you go there, you can get a free personal plan and get raster tiles for entire world. This is us, that's the, that's the company, that's the team uh, in the Swiss, Swiss uh, Alps after one of our meetings where we worked on, actively on the new MapTiler website. So thank you a lot and I'm really Keen to answer any questions. And by the way, we are hiring. If you are if you are strong on uh, uh, Python and OSM decks, let me know. Hi, do you have any guarantees on the size of the vector tile? How are you making sure that they, they're not too large, basically? Uh, sorry, I don't uh, Do you have guarantees for the size of the vector tiles? Yes, it's always, it's always a trade-off of uh, how, to, how, to, what, how many information put into the vector tiles and uh, how, how to define what should be there for, for everybody. Uh, so, um, but who, who defines that? Do you have it in the schema of the vector size generated, or we have a set of tools which is checking uh, checking the size of the. I mean, basically, the schema defines what is what is put on which zoom level, and this defines how big the tiles are for different parts of the world. We have we have an automated tool set uh, which uh, verifies or draws graphs uh, to to check if the tiles are not too big. If they are, before release of open map tiles, we shrink them down. 
Uh, this is the official release. Next to that, we have tools which are uh, shrinking the tiles depending on the style. So you can uh, you can uh, uh, give us a JSON style, um, which is I don't know like like just a hybrid on top of satellite, which don't have any doesn't have any um, houses and house numbers, and uh, based on the style, we can uh, remove all the information not displayed on the map from the vector tiles and create vector tiles which are optimized for that particular style. And either regenerating it for the entire world or, or region you want, or doing this shrinking on, on demand. Hi. Hi. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hi. Uh, so I'm uh, managing the OpenStreetMap Belgium tile server so far. And I'll definitely have a look at the open map. Tiles. I don't. I don't really. Yeah. Sorry. So you can. Is it better? Better. So, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. So I'm uh, managing the OpenStreetMap Belgium tile server, uh, and I'll definitely have a look at open map tiles. And I was wondering uh, how uh, open map tile server is handling uh, daily updates. Um. With the approach for pre-generating the entire world, uh, we don't run daily updates. We run weekly updates on our own infrastructure. Theoretically, you could run daily updates as well. Uh, but uh, the, the approach is, is that uh, we, we have diff, diff updates, uh, so we generate just the tiles which has changed. Uh, but we run it on, on weekly period on our, our servers. Theoretically, you could, you could set it up for daily too. But you would need more powerful servers, probably. If it's more region, like if you have only one country or something, it would be completely fine to just regenerate every day, for example. Mm -hmm. Hi. Uh, so, uh, how do you uh, do? You actually distribute the generation of the tiles, and say what what kind of infrastructure would it take to uh, to build the whole world as we see it in openstreetmap.org today yeah. uh, so what kind of infrastructure would be required to build it in a day yeah uh, we are using a cluster uh, for generating the entire world um, for regular releases um, we have about 30 computers uh, uh, for this purpose and uh, they are all together able to do the generating of the entire world in less than one day. So, what does the cluster run on? Uh, what system? The, the cost, like if you if you if you if you get these machines on Amazon, you would pay probably over one thousand uh, dollars for a single single rendering. It's getting cheaper, uh, but we also offer offer the pre-generated uh, tiles from our website for. Price which is lower than uh, than uh, these costs, in fact. But it's a custom uh, distribution system that you've built. Um, the costs are in the moment where you generate the tiles. I mean, CPU. Uh, yeah, yeah but uh, the system is custom built. Like you're distributing it using your own code. Um, the process. We are we are using what is on GitHub. Uh, it's just it's just um, the queue for the tasks and. Uh, all that stuff is uh, is done internally in the company, uh, but you can do that on your own if you want. Uh, there was documentation for that online. It's part of the thesis of the student who worked on the project uh, before. Uh, so so you can you can check it and and do that on your infrastructure with your technology of, of choice. Because because if you are on Amazon, you want to use queues on Amazon. Uh, if you are on Google, if you are on proprietary or private cloud, um, you always choose the tool set you want for, for this clustering. And the setup is quite complicated, usually. Thank you. OK. So thank you a lot.